Hello again. I'm John Dillon, developer of the Race Control Clock and Log application. In this third video, I'm going to show you how to establish your own racetrack configuration files, as well as how to set certain options um, for the program. I'll also touch base on one or two other pieces uh, relating to our calls that we didn't cover last time. Let's get started. Here is our program currently running. We've had three practice sessions now and we've stored them all. In this example first, before I show you configuration, I wanna show you how you can have two different clocks running independently. Let's uh, start group four practice, group four practice. Uh, again, we're gonna be accelerating the board, so they're raring to go three minutes, one minute, and we release the cars. So now the board is running. We take a couple of calls, uh, turn two, car six, brown, spun and continued. Turn three, six brown's really struggling off and on. And turn four, yep, still can't get it right. Six brown, off and on again. So we've got a few calls going on. And then the starter says, hey, we're halfway. We have five minutes remaining. And then at three minutes, we may elect, because we're trying to use get maximum track time for our drivers, we may start the next board, even though we still have three minutes remaining in this session ignoring that the actual clock is 14. So here, this clock is counting down, but the next one is already starting. So I can start group five practice board while group four is still on track. And then a starter calls and says, we have one minute remaining. At that point, we may choose, depending on the length of the racetrack and other factors, we may tell the grid to go on a three minute board. And then we get a checkered flag, at which point uh, we wait a few seconds and then all the cars are starting to come in through the back gate. And we then tell the grid to go on a one minute board. We stop the clock from the previous session and we release the cars. And now our next group is on track. Meanwhile, the last of group four's cars are just trickling off the track now, and eventually the course is clear. Notice what it says, course is clear, perhaps from a previous session. That was indeed the case here. And then it says the data has been saved to log file. Meanwhile, our current clock continues to run. It is counting down from 15 minutes. That's very useful. It gives us the ability to manage our clocks in a more realistic, real world environment. Let's look at how we can manipulate some of the options associated with the RICLA program. First, let's go to the configuration menu here at the top. We see some options here about loading a track, editing a track, or creating a new track, or deleting a track. We also here have an option, include track flag condition. If I choose that, and I come back and look again, notice now there is a check mark by it. Watch what happens. When I say hit the call button, I pick a turn, but notice now I have options for green or no flag. They effectively mean the same thing, either the track is green, ergo, we can race on it, or there's no flag, meaning same thing, or we might have a standing yellow or a waving yellow flag. For most of the organizations that I'm involved with, whether it's a surface flag, a white flag, checkered flag at start finish, any of those, that's a green flag situation for that corner. Even if they're displaying a black flag, from our perspective, it's not a yellow, ergo it's green. Uh, your organization may require something different. We also have a button here saying unknown. For example, when scoring calls, I don't really need to have a flag associated with scoring. 
So I hit timing and scoring and it doesn't even prompt me for the flag. And then I can make my call as before. Eight brown, spun and continued. If I do it from turn two, waving yellow, eight red, off and on, notice it captures that turn two is waving when that happened. Editorial comment. Personally, I trust the flaggers to do their job. I don't feel the need that they have to tell me that they were flagging accordingly or appropriately. If I need for a log purpose for something special, something out of the ordinary, um, such as a contact call, then I may ask them to give me their flag conditions. But in most cases, I don't use this option. That's why it's optional and not required. So I'm gonna turn that off again. And now notice when I hit call button, those guys are gone. End of editorial call. Another option we have here is to show spun off and on. Now that call is unique to the San Francisco region. It simply means that they spun and then they went off the track and then back on. So it's a conflation of two separate calls in our world. So if we use that, now when I make a call, say turn three, there will be, and this is an item I have not yet implemented, there will be that option showing down here. The next thing I want to show you is how you can manipulate your own tracks. Ultimately, the RCC files, which are the racetrack uh, uh, configuration files, they're plain old text. But I give them a special name uh, for uh, make it easier for my software to recognize them. Let's say first that I already have another racetrack or perhaps like a button wheel or raceway where we have many different combinations of layouts. So we could run 15 clockwise, we could run 23 clowner clockwise, we could run 15A with, a, uh, with the A section added. Let's load an existing racetrack. So under configuration, load racetrack. And then from here, I can choose, for example, here's Buttonwell Raceway 1A counterclockwise. I hit open. And now, as before, it's going to prompt me for the log file that I'm using. Now, if I choose a log file that already exists, it warns me that I am going to wipe out the existing log file. It says, are you sure you want to replace it? The answer here is no. I'm going to give it a new log file, uh, which I'll call demonstration two. And it shows you that as well as the configuration that was loaded. Also notice that up here, it now says button wheel raceway park 1A counterclockwise. So that's how I can load different tracks as I move from Willow Springs to Button Willow to uh, Auto Club Speedway to Laguna Seca, whatever, okay? Um, if I want to edit my own or modify an existing track configuration, I can do that by choosing Configuration, Edit, Selected Racetrack. Well, first, I choose the one that I want to edit. In this case, I'm going to say, let's edit Auto Club version two. So I choose it and open. And here's what it looks like. There's a name or configuration, Auto Club Speedway 2022. Auto Club only has one horse that we can use. So I don't have things like Button Willow where I've got 15A or 1A counterclockwise and so on. The next is this list of turn numbers in check-in order. So for uh, Auto Club, we run turns three, four, five, seven, nine, 10, 12, 16, and 18. Now we have a lot of workers turning out for this weekend. So we have the luxury of adding turn 17 as well. So I can edit that file and insert that there. Additionally, I want to specify that I have a fit in person 
And from there, my check course check goes from there to starter. And then from there, I also have a pit out person. And this happens to be the order that I want my course checks to be. So even though I already have a starter, it tells you right here, I could include them here as well. Next, I can either save the file, which makes it available for future use, or I can say save and load, which means immediately put it to use. I'm gonna choose save and load. It wants a name, I'll use the same name. It'll say, do you wanna overwrite it? I'll say yes. And now I have loaded Auto Club 2022. Remember, that was one of the things that I changed. And you see that up here. And now when I hit the call button, instead of seeing 20 generic turns, I now have only the turns that exist and are staffed at my racetrack, including, you'll notice here, pit in, start, pit out. These three remain no matter what. That is how you edit the racetrack configuration files. So if you want to create your own racetrack, I don't have one for Nelson Ledges, sorry, never been there. I don't have anything for VIR or Roebling Road. So here's how you can set them up. By the way, if you build your own track configuration files, feel free to send them to me and I will add them to my zipped collection of files to share with everyone. I'm gonna switch gears slightly and go back to that call button one more time. When I click the call button, notice up here, look at the time, 7.02, and I'm gonna click this button at 7.02.30, 29.30, and now I'm going to wait 10 seconds. It's gonna take me some time to specify it was turn 10 calling, car six, nine, eight, uh, gold and white. And now it's almost 20 seconds since I clicked it. And they spun and continued. Notice that the time is the time that I initially clicked the button not the time that I figured out what to type or what to choose. That gets us a little more real time in terms of timestamps. Now, realistically, most logs only go to the nearest minute. So these extra 30 seconds or 20 seconds or whatever, not that big a deal. But it's important to remember, or it's nice to remember, that when you hit the button, the time is grabbed at that point and not when you say enter it. In this video, we have seen how to set some of the options, how to edit and modify our racetrack configuration files so that we can define our own uh, configurations based on staffing availability and uh, let's face it, the geography of the racetrack. We've also seen how to set some other options, not all of which have been implemented yet, but will be coming. We've seen how if you choose to include uh, flag condition calls, that those are also available uh, simply by checking an option from the configuration menu. In the next and final video, I'm gonna show you how you can export segments of the log file rather than just saving the entire thing in one big chunk. This can be useful when you're dealing with, for example, a driver's school where you want to pull out all the information for one session and hand it to the chief driving instructor.